I noted that the president, in addition to the governor's comments, the president. So this is the 1000 D. Over. I mean, they fully intend to take this fight to all what of its battery states. pack. And, and, and part of the beauty of the decision, if you want to say And that the way, long wave band. State level. But I mean, for people who just think, well, this decision happened, so the issue's over. That issue's not over. This is the regular 1000. Someone <laughs> cut out the battery pack and added in this. Uh, Say, auxiliary power jack. It's a nifty children? little feature except this for it's clearly not stock this because this is a 16th inch headphone jack power cable for a standard uh, Zenith Royal 2000 through Transoceanic 3000, I think 7000 as well, uh, power connector cable. Clearly installed an 8th inch jack instead of a 16th inch jack. I do like the idea of a external power jack added to these radios, but I just don't like the way they implemented it on this one. So, let's switch the Roe v. Wade celebration. From one radio to the other radio. Those mad about it, just remember, it's been changed from a federal to states' rights thing. So it can still be just as liberal or conservative in whatever state you live in, as long as you have the political people in your state that have corresponding views to you. So this is the new radio. Hmm. Uh, someone clearly glued the centerpiece in a little bit wrong. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I take it back. Painters taped it in. That's... That's nice. We'll just pretend we didn't see that. So this one might have a little, uh, a little bit of a capacitator problem in it. volume control has no control over the uh, volume of the static on this. That's great. I guess it's time to shut this one down. This probably has some bad capacitators in it. I'm going to have to do some schematicking and uh, figure this out later on. So, we're back on working on the Zenith Royal 1000 Transoceanic. It looks like a lot's happened, but not really a lot has happened. Um, I brought the radio down to my bench to work on it. Figured out that I could run it off the bias supply of my B&K 415 alignment generator. And all of a sudden when I hooked it up, I had good cogent AM reception. It sounded pretty good, had plenty of volume. The only thing that was uh, driving me nuts is that the volume potentiometer had absolutely no effect on the volume, aside from when you click it down into the off position on the switch. And the tone control didn't really have much of an effect on the tone, except for at one extreme, it would pretty much duck the volume out completely. So I want to sell this radio, and probably at the Radio Fest meet, uh, a week and a day from now. So I opened it up and had a gander inside. I was expecting the ground terminal of the volume pot, which is... Boy, this phone doesn't have a... Yeah, you can see it right in there. 
despite the fact that it doesn't look soldered, it actually does seem to be soldered based on a mechanical wiggle test. Then I found someone crudely wrapped these two terminals together. Um, I've got the schematic over here underneath my sandpaper for another project for where the radio fest meet. I've got this, uh, I don't remember the make and it's not labeled clearly on it. In fact, I don't know if I even ever found the make on this. This, uh, neat bullet, uh, shaped Bakelite radio. Uh, this one I picked up at a small junk shop in, in Iowa the same day I picked up my, uh, Philco TV123 early color set that's, you can sort of see into the back of over here. That thing's its own project that I need to get back to. Where was I? Yes, I bought this Bakelite set the same day as that, and uh, it had a huge crack here and a smaller one around here. I'm basically going to bondo this radio, and uh, I'm in the process of bondoing it to hide the crack and the little missing chip out of there and all that. And then we're going to... Uh, RGB that uh, Bakelite radio. We're getting off into the weeds. So, I got the schematic for my Zenith radio here. Let's see what those terminal strip connectors are. Right here is the relevant portion of the schematic for that. Let me do a little bit of Tracing and figure this out. So the tone control. I see no 3.3k resistor that comes off of it. Oh, so that resistor goes to the tap. So instead of it being a 10k like in the schematic, it's a 3.3k. That's different. Production change detected. So basically they have this shorted to here. So they're basically bypassing the signal completely around the volume control through capacitors. Yeah, that definitely is wrong. I'd be halfway willing to put some money on one of the uh, capacitors in this little area being open, but uh, before we do that, let's just remove that silly jumper and try to get this radio back to at least its original circuit topology so we can evaluate what is and isn't wrong about that. Okay, so I took out the jumper someone tacked in and got no volume. If I short the terminals back together, I get sound. Yeah, this is volume max. Volume min, nothing. If I short these two. So, we have an open capacitor. Focus. We have an open capacitor. We could also have an open volume potentiometer. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, probolating. So, let's see what we can do here. Okay, we grabbed us a little series cap for probing. At least I hope. Really going to be tricky. Well, we just lost our, uh, the gator clips that were connecting power to the chassis, but I think I... Got the answer I'm looking for. This yellow lead in here goes up to that white capacitor back in, back there. And that capacitor is what couples signal into the volume control. I do believe that capacitor is open. I have to figure out what that capacitor is because it is not shown in the schematic. Yay, production changes. Um... You know, if I take out this screw here and this screw here, I think I can... Oh, actually, this screw here as well. If I take out those three, I think I can 
flop this assemblage open and get better access. I'm going to uh, change on that cap, and I think I'm going to test on all the other little white caps in that area. His volume didn't seem too great, even with that cap bridge, so I'd wager some of the other caps in this area are not ideal. Okay, so I changed two caps in here near the volume control. The uh, blue one that feeds the hot end of the volume control, and the other blue one that feeds from the wiper of the volume control off to the uh, input of the, of the uh, audio amplifier circuitry. Both of those had these little tiny white free microfarad uh, 12 volt units. And these caps are not great. There's others like them in the radio that are probably still kind of working. I'm not going to give this thing a full recap or check all of the capacitors. I think we're doing pretty good. This little TV speaker is not as efficient as the one in the radio, but if we turn the radio... radio's off right now. If we turn it on, put the phone near the speaker... That's maximum volume, which isn't bad. And tone works now. You can hear the tone affecting the uh, high end of the static coming through. I think this is perfectly adequate. I'm going to uh, put this back together and see how it works with its proper loop stick antenna. It might perform a little bit better if I change these caps out and maybe went hog wild and changed these, although these are a different style than the ones that failed. And maybe this guy up here might help something, but it works pretty good and I don't have a lot of time for working on all these projects I got. I've got two or three other radios I want to spruce up for the meat. I think this is now demonstrably working. Also, the other day, we made this little AC adapter for the uh, radio. I just took an old... Someone drilled a hole in the side of this cabinet and added a quarter-inch headphone jack f soldered into the old battery case connector. I'm guessing the old battery case was so corroded that they discarded it because it's gone. So I made up this little power adapter that should give it uh, a sufficient amount of voltage through that connector. Well... Actually, more, more than should, does. Yesterday I powered up the radio through this and it worked just fine. Interestingly enough, this provides a good bit more voltage than its quote-unquote output rating. So either there's an internal regulator in this power brick that has uh, shorted itself out, thus making the full voltage that was available to the input of the regulator available at the output, or this power brick was depending upon a heavier load like 200 milliamps to lug it down to its rated output voltage don't know but it works just fine for the purpose so time to get this thing back together uh, maybe i'll try to do one of them fancy snap cuts don't do the snap cut yet tom so for those wondering how the chassis comes out on one of these radios um basically there is a screw here uh, one here, one here, this one, not that one, and over on the side there's one here. To get to this one here, you stick a quarter-inch driver down in the back. It's easiest to do it with the band switch knob removed because the little, the little point it screws into is right there. So basically, it's this guy... Um, that guy, that guy, and that guy in the cabinet that hold the chassis. You also need to unplug your wave magnet connector, which is this little 7-pin tube socket style connector here. And also the antenna wire from the rod antenna that's hidden in the handle. It goes to, I'm, it went to, on this radio, this screw above the A. I think the A and the G are for an external, um, an external antenna and an external ground. Um, and 
that the you can see there are two different wires one green wire to this terminal one uh orange wire to that terminal and also that this ground is connected directly to chassis ground so theoretically this is the correct terminal i haven't double checked it on the schematic but my instincts say that it's correct okay chassis bolts are all back in oh we forgot the speaker yeah that that's a somewhat important little component to connect. Otherwise, I'm going to be wondering what I did to completely lose sound. Something terrible and horrible, I'm sure. Okay. It's possible I might have connected that speaker backwards. Eh. It doesn't really matter if I did speakers. Speaker's polarity only matters on surround sound and stereo systems. If you only got a monophonic audio path like this radio has, speaker polarity is relatively meaningless. Let's just stick that dude on there. The non-pointy one, I'm pretty sure, is our tone. We'll make our pointy dude the volume. Okay, that's all good. Let's hook up our homemade power brick. And let's see how it works. Um, hmm. now. I see. Okay. I don't need to vote that. I'm, uh, it's so two out of three. We already yep, have yep. That's good and loud. So there's, a, there's a couple Very other things loud. I want to get to as well. So Tonight's for the Cardinals six. It's powerful tech. For a one-run homer, RBI single. So the top three in the order for Cleveland, seven hits. That's where the action was. And those three were in support of Can Shane Bieber. Can you after talk that first inning, more really locked like in. William by Trevor Shatner, in the eighth and please. Emmanuel Classe in the next. You can hear the tone control working. Sure, food delivery driver, part time or full time, anytime during the last three years, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Text Grub to 323232 32 now to see if you qualify for. That's minimum volume. It's got pretty good volume range. I wonder what's on the squirrel bands. Shorted way of bands. Oh, one thing that might help is uh, let's deploy the rod antenna. Well, that increased our noise floor. The rod antenna is clearly taller than the ceiling to the bench in this room. Oh, it's the Sideband Single Amateur Radio Dating Channel. This thing doesn't have a, uh, a big frequency oscillator to uh, synchronize to the uh, alien uh, chat room noises, so we can't enjoy those.
got us a time station. Now remember, this is a basement that this is being filmed and received from. So, great reception is not expected. I do have a basement long wire, does that help? CCR. That's a copyright flag. I think I'll have to go back to that station with the CCR later on. This sounds tropical. More squirrel sideband. A zoom iguana? That would make for a good zoom meeting. A zoom iguana. there will be anything on these upper bands this late at night. So maybe some amateur radio digital stuffs.
I don't know if that's what I had earlier. This is sounding better. make somebody happy it works pretty well you might be able to squeeze some more performance out of this thing with some more effort you might be able to squeeze some more beauty out of this thing with some more effort but I have a 1000 D I don't need to also have a 1000 so I'll probably see if I can get 80 bucks out of this something like that see if somebody uh, beats me down with a stick to 70 or 60 or Whatever. It's a good enough radio that I can sell it as working, and somebody who somebody who will love this thing more than me can potentially make it work just a skosh better and make it look a bit better. Now, this is plenty good enough for the sell it as a working radio category. I'm happy with this. Turned out well. <laughs> 